The Palestinians were traditionally a farming people, living and working in villages scattered throughout Palestine. For the peasant farmer, there existed a strong bond with the land, the source of a family's livelihood and its wealth, built up through generations of cultivating the soil. Abu Muhammad is typical of many. He used to farm the fertile lands of a village called Safuri in a lush plain just outside Nazareth in the north of Palestine. Centuries of working the soil gave to the Palestinian peasant farmer a strong sense of belonging to the land. But this bond was not based on the same formal concept of land ownership as in the West. The property of land uh, in the past was, uh, as it was called, al masha that's collective ownership of the land. Everyone one who worked the, land, worked the land owned it. He doesn't own it, but as long as he works it, it is his. The Ottomans began a process of land registration which gave formal titles to the land. But in many villages, the land was simply classed as common land. Under the British administration, this land passed to the state and could be bought on the open market. Other tracts of land were registered, often by absentee landlords acquiring vast estates in Syria and Palestine in return for services to the Ottomans. This land, too, could be sold quite legally, and there began a massive transfer of tens of thousands of acres from Palestinian farmers to Zionist settlers. To the Jews from the crowded ghettos of Europe, Palestine represented a liberation. Here Jews could buy land and build their society through their own labors, and this was seen as a form of national redemption. Young Jews from Europe began to arrive in Palestine by the thousand. Each new settlement was seen as bringing the Zionist dream of building a Jewish homeland nearer. But for the Palestinians, each new settler threatened a future in which they would have no place on their own land. Well, uh, to establish a Jewish national homeland, you needed two things. You needed people and you needed land. These were the two important spokes, as it were. Uh, the people, obviously, were the immigrants, colonial settlers, who appeared, in fact, to the Palestinians as colonial settlers much in the same way that British settlers in what used to be called Rhodesia or in South Africa. Uh, we viewed the Jewish settlements because it is composed of European people who spoke European languages. They are not indigenous Jews. And they came in the wake of the British administration that is committed to transform this. So we knew as Palestinians that the two things that are taking place, the increase in the Jewish population of Palestine, an increase that's coming from Europe, and second, they needed the land, okay? And the major land areas that were bought, in fact, by the colonization societies, by the Karen Kayemet, were bought from Lebanese or Syrian uh, absentee landlords who had nothing to do with the land, but the tillers of the land, and that was a major issue, were evicted from those lands. So there had developed an understanding by the Palestinians that with each Jewish migration, there is an expulsion of the Arabs and there is an acquisition of land. The threat to the Palestinians was that land once acquired by the Zionist was declared inalienable from the Jewish people, 
It could never revert to the Arabs who had worked the land for generations. And we could not help but feel, in fact, that the growth of this alternative society that literally had nothing to do with the Palestinian Arab society, that stood in antagonism to, the, to, to Palestinian Arab society, we could see that at a certain point in time, that society is going to overwhelm us. To finance the building of the Jewish state, hundreds of thousands of dollars had to be raised abroad. The call of Zion had to be loud and uncompromising. They are coming now to a land which accepts them as its own, and not merely as strangers to be tolerated. Tomorrow they will march to their work to build roads, to drill wells, and bring the hidden water to restore to Palestine's soil its long-neglected fruitfulness. Beach is the greatest place of recreation in Palestine. This was a shock to the, to the Palestinians who began to uh, be aware uh, of the plans, the real plans of the Zionists who are coming to Palestine. They began to see that the Zionists are coming to, coming to take the land and to push the Palestinians out of it, and so they decided to resist. Violence became endemic. There were major riots against Jewish communities in 1929, in 1933, and in 1934, leaving hundreds dead. The Jews accused the British of failing to preserve law and order. We had those um, uprisings in Palestine from time to time. Every year we, we had uh, uprising, and it lasted sometimes for uh, months. And we always heard about those heroes and the fighters that were fighting the British army and then the Zionists. Um, all this uh, uh, created in us this, this feeling of nationalism. The 1930s saw a dramatic increase in the number of Zionist immigrants to Palestine, from 4,000 in 1931 to over 60,000 in 1935, many fleeing from the rise of Hitler in Germany. The Palestinians feared being swamped by these new settlers. A sense of panic and desperation spread amongst them. The leader of the Palestinian national movement was Hajambin al-Husseini, the Mufti of Jerusalem, 